We're back with John Mark Homer, pastor of Bridgetown Church in Portland, Oregon. And John Mark, you've written this great new book called God Has a Name. And you talk about a, a scripture in the Bible that you say is the most quoted scripture in the Bible by the Bible. Mm -hmm. And it's Exodus chapter 34, 6 to 8. And yes. I know you know it by heart. Yes, Share it I with do. Us. Um, so the story is Moses on top of Mount Sinai, and it's that famous story that says, show me your glory, meaning show me who you are and what you're like. And God says, I will proclaim my name. And he comes down and says, the Lord proclaimed his name, and it's the Lord, the Lord, or in Hebrew it's actually not a title, it's a proper name, Yahweh, Yahweh, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents, the third and the fourth generation. Mm -hmm. That little paragraph, a lot of people don't realize, is the most quoted, I would argue, and a number of scholars argue, it's a little hard to measure, but definitely the or one of the most quoted verses in all of the Bible by the Bible, meaning the writers of the Bible just circle back to it, quote it, allude to it, put it into poetry, quote it back to God, pray it to God, argue about it, teach on it. It's this, it's this long running theme all through the scriptures. So that would be essentially us meeting God saying, hi, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yes. What are you like? What are you like? And this would be yes. God's answer to me. And what I think is so interesting is, you know, in the Western world, because we were, our, our, we think so in line with Greek philosophy, that's kind of how we're raised through the education system to think. We, when we talk about God, we tend to start with this list of attributes. Have you ever read a, a book on God or a systematic theology? It's God is omnipresent, mm -hmm. he's all yeah. places, and he's yeah. omniscient, he's all knowing, which is all beautiful things. But when God describes himself, he doesn't talk about how he's everywhere and he knows everything and he's all powerful. He talks about what we would call personality yeah. or even character, what his emotional disposition is mm. toward us. And there's, I mean, the fact that God has a name and it's Yahweh, I make a big deal about that. Mm -hmm. Why does God need a name? And it's because he's not just an idea or a concept or a force, he's a person, not person as in human being, yeah. but as in a relational being who wants to relate. And what convicted me actually in the book is when you said that, you said, you know, we need to call God by his name, not and we do call him Lord, we, yeah. we call him all of these titles, as you said, but really and truly his name mm -hmm. is Yahweh. Yes, yeah, and, and what you call somebody reveals the depth of your intimacy and relationship to them. You know, if somebody calls me Mr. Comer, yeah. or, you know, nobody calls me Reverend at my church, but uh, Reverend or whatever, that says that we have a formal relationship, we're not close, mm -hmm. there's a differential between mm -hmm. us. Um, my wife doesn't call me Mr. Comer or <laughs> Reverend. You know, my children don't. They call me Dad or Honey or, you know, whatever goofy name that I won't share with you <laughs> on TV we have back home, you know. And that's the language of intimacy. Yeah. And so even calling, the, the, calling God the Lord is fine, but it's kind of like me calling Tammy, my wife, you know, the wife yeah. or whatever. It's, the, it's a title. Yeah. Um, whereas the actual Hebrew name is Yahweh, it's a proper name. So out of this scripture, we only have a couple minutes left, what stands out to you the most about God in I, Exodus 35? I think for me, um, that opening idea that God is compassionate, mm -hmm. that's a feeling word, and actually the etymology of that word is it was used, the root word is a female womb. Mm. And so the idea is the feeling that a mother in particular, father too, but especially a mother has toward her infant child. That is how God feels toward you. This idea that God's baseline emotional disposition toward you at all times is compassion. Mm -hmm. He does get angry, mm -hmm. but he's slow to anger. Mm -hmm. And um, to, that for me was, I think, a turning point to realize God is a person who wants to relate to me. And he's like a mother, like a father who wants, whose emotion is bent in goodwill toward me. And John Mark, that's hard for some people to get. It's hard for me. Especially yeah, the because, self critic, the. Well, and also if we're going through something hard mm -hmm. in our lives, be it cancer, be it our yes. husband or, or our wife leaving us, or some sort of difficulty in our lives, it's hard to see why God would allow those things to happen. Yes. Why would He allow those things yeah. to happen? Yeah, and there's no short answer to that, but one of the things I really emphasize in the book is that. I think our understanding of what theologians call providence, of why bad things happen, or good things, is far too simplistic. Mm -hmm. And we're f we blame God for all sorts of things that he's not responsible for. 
You know, so in the universe, there are at least four wills at play in any scenario. There's God's will, meaning what he's doing in a situation. There's our will, what we're doing in a situation, and what the other seven billion people on the planet, human will, are doing. That's a whole lot of yeah. different people with different agendas trying to do or succeeding in doing different things. There is some kind of a spiritual will, whether you want to use the language of angels and demons or powers or principalities or spirits, whatever language you're comfortable with. There is an invisible realm that is just as real as the visible realm that has a will, mm -hmm. that has freedom to obey God and honor Him and to do justice or to do the exact opposite, to wreak havoc. And then nature, in a sense, has a will, not a sentient will, but there's, you know, climate change and global warming and storms and all. I hear it was quite cold here recently. Yeah, you know? yeah let's not talk about that. <laughs> and so these, these wills all intermingle. And often, you know, when good things happen, nobody has a crisis of faith over good, mm. which is ironic. You, nobody, like, has, I got a job promotion. Why Where is God? Job? This is not fair. Yeah, Other people yeah. around the world are unemployed. Nobody has a crisis of faith over good. Lots of people have crisis of faith over evil. Mm. And often we default to blame God when God is often there suffering with us. Jesus suffered himself. He was crucified. He was put to death illegally and incorrectly. And there are so many other wills at play. And so I think I want to, through the book, highlight people's kind of grasp without getting too academic or anything like that. Man, there are other wills at play. We're way too quick to blame God for things that he is suffering through with us. Yeah. And I love what you say at the end. We need to remember that we carry our Father's name. Yes. Thank you so much, John, yes, for your time. Yes, it's a joy time. to be here. Thank you. And I hope that resonates with you today. I know many of you might be watching that have no grid of who Jesus is, don't truly understand, or maybe you've written him off, as I said earlier today. Could I encourage you to call our prayer lines and just talk to our prayer partners? What do you have to lose? Just call them up. Ask them about Jesus and they would love to tell you a little bit more about who he truly is. They would love to get you a Bible into your hand, connect you with a community, a church that, where you could find out more about him. And then you get the choice. You either say yes or you say no. But let me tell you, I think John Mark would agree with me. If you say yes, you're making the wisest decision of your life. Call the, the phone numbers at the bottom of your screen, 1-866-273-4444. Stay with us. We'll be right back.